On this worksheet, we're going to practice drawing the mechanism for the formation of an imine uh, and also an enamine. An imine is formed when we react a carbonyl compound with a primary amine, a primary amine being a nitrogen that has two hydrogens attached. In this very first problem, we are looking at kind of a unique situation where the carbonyl compound and the amine are both part of the same molecule. And that is definitely an option. They don't have to be two entirely separate molecules. So the mechanism is an acid catalyzed reaction for, you know, for all, always the case with the formation of the amine. And that means that the very first step of this reaction is going to be using the acid, which is um, HOTS or TSOH. And we're going to be using that acid to protonate the oxygen of the carbonyl group to give us this right here. That's going to be what we start with. And then um, the next step of this reaction, the lone pair of electrons on our amine are going to attack the carbonyl carbon and open up the carbon oxygen double bond. So when I draw this initially, I'm going to just draw it really ugly. So I'm going to start by just, you know, drawing out that molecule, open up the carbon oxygen double bond. Looks like that. We've got two lone pairs on the oxygen and we have made a bond from the nitrogen over there to the to the um to the carbonyl carbon. Super gross way to look at it, but what I'm trying to do is not mess this drawing up. I don't want to lose any carbon atoms in the drawing. So once I've drawn it really ugly like that, I can take a look and see that this is forming a ring and it's forming a one, two, three, four membered ring where one of the one of the members of the ring is the nitrogen atom. So I'm going to redraw this trying to make it look better, like not make it look so gross. Once I've identified that I've got that four membered ring. So I'm going to go ahead and just like, don't forget also that this is one of the components of the ring right here. So that's, I've got one piece of the ring. There's going to be carbon number two, number one, number two, number three, number four, number one, number two. Um, my nitrogen is bonded to carbon number one. So there's my number four. And then here's going to be my carbon number three out here. That nitrogen has got two hydrogens on it, which means that the nitrogen has a positive formal charge. So the next thing that will happen is I'm going to use some of my conjugate base, OTS minus, to deprotonate the nitrogen like that. And that is going to give me, first of all, another opportunity to make this structure look a little bit nicer. Like that. It's going to give me this guy right here. And what I have done in this, when I, when I did this deprotonation, I recreated my acid, my TSOH acid. TSOH. And so that acid is going to be used to protonate, protonate my oxygen again. Anytime you have an acid in the presence of an oxygen, you're going to be protonating it. So I'm going to protonate my oxygen again, and that is going to give me a really good leaving group on this molecule. I've got a water molecule on it now. And so what I'm going to do next is actually get rid of that water molecule. And also at the same time, we're going to move a lone pair of electrons from the nitrogen up into the molecule to make a carbon nitrogen double bond. So it's going to look like that. And that will put a positive formal charge on this nitrogen. Uh, and then we're just going to use something, uh, we could use the conjugate base of our acid, TSO-, or we could also use some water. We're going to use something to do uh, one final deprotonation of the nitrogen right there, and that's going to give us our final product, this guy right here, which is the imine. An imine which has a 
uh, carbon nitrogen double bond. For the second reaction, we're looking at a reaction between a ketone, a carbonyl compound, and a secondary amine. A secondary amine is one that has only one hydrogen on it, two alkyl groups. So this mechanism is going to be a little bit different, um, but it's going to start out the exact same way. So we're going to begin with using our acid H2SO4 to protonate the oxygen of the carbonyl group. give us this guy right here and then we're going to use lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen of our amine to attack the carbonyl carbon and open up the carbon oxygen double bond and that will give us I'm going to try to figure out the best way to draw this that's going to create a bond to the carbonyl carbon from the nitrogen. The nitrogen still has both of its methyl groups, I'm just gonna use line structure for that, plus the hydrogen on it as well. So the nitrogen, nitrogen's gonna bring all of these things with it and it's gonna end up with a positive formal charge right here. We're gonna use the conjugate base of our sulfuric acid, HSO4 minus, or we could be using water, anything basically, to deprotonate that nitrogen. So we'll grab that hydrogen off of the nitrogen and that will give us, this is a pretty bulky drawing. I'm trying to draw it as cleanly as possible. It's going to give us this guy. Now our nitrogen only has two methyl groups on it, lone pair, no more formal charge. But we recreated the sulfuric acid, H2SO4. I like to write it as H bond HSO4. Um, so what we're going to do next, because we have an oxygen atom in the presence of an acid, we're going to be protonating our oxygen atom. And now we have made another water molecule, another good leaving group, formal positive charge on that oxygen atom. And our water molecule is going to leave, so we're going to break the carbon-oxygen bond. And also, at the same time, we're going to take that lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen, and we're going to bring them down in to make a carbon-nitrogen double bond. So our water has left. It's no longer on the molecule. We now have a carbon-nitrogen double bond. The nitrogen still has both of its methyl groups. The nitrogen has a positive formal charge. When we were at this point in the previous mechanism, we were right here. We'd made that carbon-nitrogen double bond, positive formal charge on the nitrogen. Our nitrogen had a hydrogen on it, and we were able to just deprotonate it to fix that positive charge. But down here, we don't have a hydrogen on our nitrogen anymore, so we don't have anything that we can do you know, to deprotonate and fix the positive charge. So instead of deprotonating the nitrogen to fix the positive charge, what happens is a deprotonation of one of the carbon atoms adjacent to the carbon-nitrogen double bond. Something has to be deprotonated. It can't be the nitrogen. It can't be this carbon because they don't have hydrogens on them. So it's either going to be this carbon over here. We've got a couple of hydrogens over there. Or it's going to be this carbon right here. We've got one. The uh, deprotonation is going to take place at the most substituted site, which means it's going to take place over here. Here, you'll see why in a second. It's not going to want to grab one of these guys. It wants to grab a hydrogen off of the most substituted carbon. Let's um, let's see. We've we have recreated our conjugate base, our HSO4 minus. So let's use our HSO4 minus to grab that hydrogen. I said we're going to pick this guy right here. We're going to take those carbon hydrogen electrons and we're going to move them in to make a carbon carbon double bond. And we're going to move the carbon nitrogen electrons back up onto the nitrogen atom as a lone pair. So that's how we're going to fix the positive charge on the nitrogen. Now we're going to fix that by just putting a lone pair on the nitrogen, getting rid of that double bond. When we, um, we still have our methyl group out here. When we take this hydrogen off, we put a, uh, make a carbon-carbon double bond, it's located right there. So the reason that we're grabbing this hydrogen is because if we look and see, it creates the most substituted alkene 
possible. If we grabbed one of these hydrogens out here, the double bond would be located on this site, which is a less substituted alkene, not quite as stable. This is the final product of our reaction, and this product is called an enamine because it is an alkene slash amine.